This is, I am told, the worst shooting disaster in Canadian history, third worst in North American history. December 6, 1989, the day before midterm exams at École Polytechnique in Montreal. Just before 5 p.m., Marc Lepin walked into the engineering school with a semi-automatic rifle. Within 20 minutes, he murdered 14 women. That's Nathalie Provost, one of the survivors of the Polytechnique Montreal massacre. He came in the class, he shot in the wall just behind me. He yelled at the guy that they have to leave the classroom. Nine women all together in the corner of the room. He told us that uh, we were there because we were feminist. And I answered him back that we were not feminist. And if he wants to study at Polytechnique, he can come with us. And then he shot. Tak, 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 tak. Pretty loud, pretty off. It's awful. And you see, I saw the eyes of a colleague die. And then you know that you will die. You'll the, you're the next one. And it takes a second. And then you're on the floor and it's finished. Nine people were shot in that classroom. Six died, all women. Over the next 15 minutes, eight more people were killed. All of them, women. What followed the shooting was utter chaos. Emergency responders didn't really know what to do as this was one of the first active shooters in Quebec and one of the first school shootings in North America. There were a number of miscommunications and delays for first responders to actually get on the scene. Police only entered the building when they got word the suspect had taken his own life, nearly 25 minutes after the first 911 call. The coroner's report called the disaster plan poorly defined and the operation as a whole suffered as a result. The media was also unsure how to handle the situation. And when he came out and said uh, that there were a dozen students that uh, the reporters just all got real quiet. You don't very often see reporters get quiet, but nobody said much after that. The coverage following the massacre often excluded the word feminist, unless to quote the killer. It was portrayed as an individual situation. A lone gunman spun out of control. We were, we were sent out to try to find out why uh, the murderer would have done this, um, what must have happened in his childhood or his background that made him commit an act of violence. You, you, you know, do what you're told, but at the same time, there was no um, reflection on would we cover the violence against women angle, because that seemed beside the point. I was watching The National and um, the late Barbara Frum was doing a, um, a special on this and uh, you could see on a national scale that she too was trying to not make it about violence against women. But, but isn't the crime, the brutality against this particular group this time, it could have been another group. Would we be having vigils for every group if it was 14 men, would we be having vigils? Isn't violence the monstrosity here? Mac Lepin's motive could not have been more clear. He said it in the classroom as well as in his suicide note. But it would still take decades to call it what it was, Canada's first mass femicide. Globally, as a society, imagining that one of our boy can kill 14 of our girls is so hard to conceive, is so hard to accept. It's to see a big flaw in our society. So I don't, I don't agree, but I understand why um, uh, people in charge wanted to diminish the division between men and women. I understand that it might have happened. I understand why feminists uh, who had strong power in time, in, in, at that time, why they were so hurt, but from my bed, from my recovery time, um, I, I, I was not involved in those discussions. Along with his suicide note, Le Pen included a list of women he considered radical feminists, who he would have killed if he had more time. Francine Pelletier was on that hit list. The denial was, was, was quite something um, to witness, and especially here in Quebec, where we are very proud of having come a long way. You know, the Quiet Revolution completely reinvented uh, the province. We, we went from being, you know, a, 
a backwards place to a very progressive place. And the idea that uh, women could be victims of such barbary. I mean, this is like, suddenly we were in the Middle Ages. People just refused the thought. 30 years later, how much has changed? Stricter gun control laws have been implemented in Canada thanks in part to a number of polytechnic survivors who continue to fight for tighter restrictions even today. Emergency responders have learned how to confront active shooters and how to manage their stress and emotions in order to make the right decisions in dangerous situations. The discussion of violence against women is also shifting. I think we realize that uh, women are still very much uh, vulnerable, are still vulnerable in a way that most men aren't. And we're seeing it now with the incel rebellion, with these men, and the Me Too movement is another indication. The narrative around the Montreal massacre is also beginning to change. A sign at the memorial to the 14 women who were killed was recently replaced to make it clear the killings were an anti-feminist attack. I said that I wasn't a feminist because for me, 30 years ago, being a feminist meant uh, being involved in a cause, being officially involved in a cause, in a group, and I wasn't. I was a student. I realized many years after that being a feminist is living in a certain way. And if I define feminism as living in a certain way and raising my children in a certain way, then I know that I am a feminist. This is why we remember December 6th, the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women. We remember these faces. These lives lost to violence. targeted because they were women. And my last message was that I asked every girl in Quebec and everywhere in the world who wants to be an engineer to keep this idea in their mind. For the society and for us. <laughs>